Today we're going to go over similar triangles, which will look very, very similar to whenever we went over congruent triangles. Um, in fact, we are using side, side, side again and side, angle, side. Um, but now we're going to use it for similarity. So if you remember when we did similar polygons, we found that the angles are congruent, but the sides are proportional. So um, that'll be a little bit different whenever we're talking about these similar triangles. So first of all, angle-angle similarity is if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. So what this is saying is if angle A is congruent to angle F and angle B is congruent to angle G, then triangle ABC is similar to triangle FGH. And all you need to know are two, because if two are congruent, the third pair are going to be congruent. That's just um, the property we've been dealing with for two units now, where all the angles have to add up to be 180. So if two of them are congruent, the third one is going to be. Um, so all we have to say is angle, angle. We don't have to say angle, angle, angle. All right, side, side, side similarity says if the corresponding side lengths of two triangles are proportional, not congruent, that's for congruent triangles, these have to be proportional, um, then the triangles are similar. So in this example, um, the proportional sides are all color coded. So if JL over MQ is equal to JK over MP and is also equal to LK over QP, then the triangles are similar. In other words, if all the sides are proportional, then triangle um, JKL is similar to triangle MPQ. All right, then we have side angle side similarity. So it says if the lengths of two sides of one triangle are proportional to the same to the corresponding two sides of another triangle and the two included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. Okay, so what this says is if you have two sides that are proportional on the two triangles, then and the angles between them are congruent so sides are proportional angles are congruent then those triangles are similar so in other words if rs over xy i should say if is equal to st over yz and angle s is congruent to angle y then your two triangles are similar. So triangle RST is similar to triangle XYZ. All right, so here's an example. Um, it's asking, are the triangles similar? And if so, write their similarity statements. So what we need to do is figure out if all the sides are proportional. Um, because that's all that we're given on these two triangles are sides. So we need to know if all three sets of sides are proportional to all three sets of the other sides, then um, they would be similar. So the way that you do this is what is the smallest side on each triangle? So on the left, that's this one. On the right, that's this one. And then what's the largest side? So on the left, it's 16. On the right, it's 12. And then the one that's left is the last one. So those are all of your proportions you're going to set up. So is 16 over 12 the same thing as 12 over 9? And is that the same thing as 8 over 6? So whenever I reduce these all the way down to their smallest fraction, I get 4 thirds for every single one of them. So on the first fraction, 4 goes into both. 4 will go into 16 4 times. 4 will go into 12 3 times. On the second one, 
uh, 3 goes into both, so 3 goes into 12 4 times, 3 goes into 9 3 times. On the last one, 2 goes into both, and 2 goes into 8 4 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times. So that's how you reduce it to 4 thirds. So are they similar? Yes, they are, because all of those are proportional. Therefore, it is similar by side, side, side. And my triangle similarity statement is that triangle uh, JKL is similar to triangle, I need between pink and green Q. And then between pink and yellow is P. And then Q, P, M. And yes, you have to make sure that this second one is named like the first one the exact same way that we did in congruent triangles. They have to go with their corresponding sides. So the way that that worked is J is between green and pink. So J has to go with the one that's between green and pink, which is Q. K is between pink and yellow. So over here, the one that's between pink and yellow is P. And then lastly, we have L that's between green and yellow, and between green and yellow over here is M. So they have to go together that way. All right, our next example, um, we are given just two sides, but don't forget that vertical angles are congruent. So we do have the set, the congruent angle in between. We need to make sure that the sides are proportional. So remember smallest side first, this one is 10, the smallest side on the right one is 20. And then the largest side on the left one is 11. The largest side on the right one is 22. So is 22 over 11 going to give me the same thing as 20 over 10? Well, 22 divided by 11 is 2, and 20 divided by 10 is also 2. So my sides are proportional. And then also angle... TWZ is congruent to angle YWX because they are vertical angles. So yes, they are similar. And it's by side, angle, side. Therefore, triangle TWZ is similar. Did I write similar on this one? Oh, I did. Okay. I was afraid I got too used to writing congruent. Um, triangle Y, W, X. Okay, so whenever you have a line inside of a triangle, obviously both this little triangle here and the big triangle here, they both share this top angle. So it's going to be congruent on both. So in other words, we have this big triangle and this angle is going to be the same. This is M. P O and on the left we have X plus 5 and on the right we have 6 9 and 3 fifths that's adding the two together and then we have the little one that also has this angle in common which is M Q N and it's 5 and 6 so those are my two similar triangles I just separated them um, but they were together. So to find what QP and MP are, we need to set up our proportions. So this one goes with this one, and this one goes with this one. And it is easier if I turn that 9 and 3 fifths into a mixed number. So 9 and 3 fifths is equal to 48 fifths. That'll probably just make life easier. Okay, so we have x plus 5 over 5 is equal to 48 fifths over 6. Cross multiply. You have 6x plus 5 is equal to cross multiply here. And let me tell you what's going to happen whenever we multiply these. You have a whole number 5, a whole number 5 um, times 48 over 5. So 48 times 5 is 240. 
But then we need to divide that by 5, which just gives me 48. So it looks like that. Distribute your 6 to everything on the inside, and that gives me 6x plus 30. Subtract 30 on both sides. 6x is equal to 18. Divide by 6 on both sides. And x is 3. But that's not what I'm supposed to be finding. I'm supposed to be finding QP. Well, QP is x. So QP is 3. And then MP is x plus 5, which is 3 plus 5 which means that MP is 8. Okay, um, they're saying that these angles are congruent. And if that happens, that means that these two sides are the same and these two sides are the same. So we have to set up our proportions. You have X plus 6 over 2X plus 6 and then 8 over 10. Cross multiply, you have 8 times 2x plus 6 is equal to 10x plus 6. Distribute everything. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 6 is 48. 10 times x is 10x. 10 times 6 is 60. Subtract 10x from both sides. 6x plus 48 is equal to 60. Subtract 48 on both sides. 6x is equal to 12. Divide by 6. And x is 2. So if x is 2, then wr is x plus 6, which is 2 plus 6, which means it's 8. And then RT is 2 times x, so 2 times 2, which is 4, and then plus 6. So 4 plus 6 is 10. And all I did is I plugged that 2 back in. So if you want to see exactly what I did, it's WR is x plus 6, which is 2 plus 6, which is 8. Um, RT is 2 times 2 plus 6, which is 4 plus 6, which is 10. All right, last one. Um, and this one's kind of going to be hard to see. So first of all, you have the big triangle, this thing, okay? Oops. So you have H, G, and J, and this is 10, this is 7, this is 1 arc, this is 2 arcs. And then you have H, D, which is 1, and G, which is 2. This is 2x minus 2, this is 2x plus 4, and this is 7. Okay, so this one will be easier if I mark the angles. So D is the one arc and H is the one arc. G is the double arc. G is still the double arc. And the thing that's left is there. Okay, so let's deal with 2X minus 2 first, which is between pink and yellow. So between pink and yellow is 7. And then 2x plus 4, which is between green and yellow. So between green and yellow over here is 10. Now we cross multiply. 10 times 2x minus 2. 7 times 2x plus 4. Distribute everything. 10 times 2 is 20x, 10 times negative 2 is minus 20, 7 times 2x is 14x, and 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract 14x on both sides. 6x minus 20 is equal to 28. Add 20 to both sides. 6x is equal to 48. 
divide by 6, and x is 8. So GD is 2 times 8, which is 16, minus 2, which is 14. And then DH is 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 4, which is 20. So again, I just plugged it in for X and salt. That's the end of our notes.